Hi, my name is Jane Brigoli, and I have done a lot of watercolors in the past. I love doing watercolors. It's one of my favorite mediums because there's so much you can do in watercolor. It is a unique medium, and um, today I'm going to show you some of the things that I have learned over the years in practicing my watercolor paintings. In the past, I have done different sorts of textures. I've done uh, barn walls, I've done animals with fur, animals with not so much fur, um, people with leather jackets on, people with uh, sweaters that are, they look so soft that you could, wanted to reach out and touch them. Um, so I really love achieving texture. And today, I'm going to show you how to do texture on a cement wall. Today, I'll be working on a large painting of the Friendly Fruit sign, the Friendly Fruit Mart sign, that you may remember was on the corner of Rockdale Avenue and Cove Road. And a couple months ago, uh, I drove by and I saw that it had been exposed after all these years of being bricked up and uh, there were wooden panels over it. So when I saw the, the old sign exposed, I stopped and took a photograph of it. Today, I drove by and it's totally covered over again. There's some uh, gray bricks over it. So I guess they're going to make another restaurant out of that, out of that space. It has a long history of uh, restaurants in that area after Friendly Fruit moved to New Bedford. I'll be practicing layering. Uh, I'll show you spattering technique with uh, toothbrushes. And I'll show you how to do a wash. I'll scrape out the paint with a razor blade and I'll show you how to do some dry brush techniques on this large painting. I did this on Arches 300 pound rough watercolor paper. It's stretched on a, a large piece of homosote board. I primed the homosote board with uh, acrylic primer and um, I stapled it, stapled the paper down after stretching it in a wad of water for about five to 10 minutes. So it should be nice and secure to the board. And I stapled it and then taped it. Before I sketched out my painting on the uh, watercolor paper, I did uh, four different compositional sketches. And um, <clears throat> I tried to decide exactly where I would put the the main focus of the painting, which is the Friendly Fruit Mart sign, and I wanted to get an interesting composition. A lot of people think of uh, doing the main focus of interest right in the middle of the painting. Um, I wanted to get something a little bit different, something a little more dynamic, and so I experimented with these four different compositional sketches. Um, and one, I put the Friendly Fruit Mart sign right in the middle of the painting. And one I put down at the bottom. And one I put the Friendly Fruit Mart up, up to the left. And the one that I decided on was the Friendly Fruit Mart painting over to the right upper corner. So as you can see in my picture here, this circle is the exact center of the painting. And as you can see, I did not put the sign right in the middle, but I put it up to the corner. So when you do your paintings, it's really important to think about your composition and um, do a couple of different sketches <clears throat> on, on scrap paper. Um, do enough sketches so that you decide on something that really um, makes, gives you a lot of interest and that makes you 
um, intrigued to want to do the painting in that way. So I'm erasing the circle. Right. I did a practice painting, so I would, um, I would recommend doing a practice painting before you go and do a large painting like this. The 300 pound Arches watercolor paper is a little expensive and you want to make all your mistakes on a practice. You want to make all your mistakes on a practice piece first. I hope I've done that. We'll see. <laughs> The great thing about doing the painting that I'm going to do today is if you make a mistake, it's okay. Because you are never going to be able to replicate this exactly the way it is. Um, so we're going to say today that there are no mistakes, there are just happy accidents. Um, and so you can turn whatever you do today into something that would look great and um, you can I'll show you how to erase things that you've done how to change them around how to add to your painting and the great thing about this is that even though I have um, photographs to go by I have a black and white photo and a color photo you don't have to you don't have to do exactly what you see in the photo. You are free to change it around and improvise and turn it into the exciting painting that you want it to be. So don't be afraid to tackle something like this. Really, it really is a lot of fun. You will have a lot of freedom to do what you want to do with this sort of texture technique. This is a large wash brush. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the paper. And I've done the, uh, the Friendly Fruit Mart sign in red colored pencil. And so I can paint right over that and it won't affect the sign. If I was, if I did the uh, Friendly Fruit in, um, watercolor pencil then it would wash right out but since this is not watercolor pencil I don't have to worry about it I can go right over it so I'm going to first do a large section of the background of the cement wall and it was it was painted a sort of uh, um, uh, brownish color so I'm going to switch and uh, Use my umbers and some sienna and just put this where I want it to be. I'm going to have a little blue strip off to the right so I don't want to go over that. I want to save that spot. If you want to pull out some of the color, just take your paper towel and just dab it right over there and you'll take it right out. No worries, it will come out. This is not permanent. And as you can see, I'm not trying to get this exactly um, perfect. Some of the spots didn't get uh, water on them, so they're not, so the paint isn't showing up, but that's okay. Like I said, this is going to be fun today. You're going to experiment and um, try different things out, and it's all good.
trust me, nobody is going to come up to you and say, that was not on the Friendly Fruit Mart sign. I didn't see that. They're not going to say that because they're not going to know. So you can do whatever you want to and um, you will, people will love it. They will just think it's great. So, so there's one layer. So um, I can put as much paint on this um, to get it as dark as I want. Um, so now I'm going to go in there with a little bit darker paint and I'm going to put in some of the shadow. There's a shadow right along here. And I've made some very faint guidelines. Um, that doesn't mean that I have to go by my guidelines. You can always change them. I'm going to make it a little darker at the bottom here. So when I did my practice painting, I did not use a large brush like this. Um, that's only, I'm just using the large brush because this is a very large piece of paper and I want to do this very quickly. Oh, no, see, I made a mistake because I wanted to save this spot. I wanted to put red in here. So you see how easy it is to dab that out? As long as you catch it quickly, Okay, now I can put some red in that spot. And I wanted red in that area because the uh, Friendly Fruit Mart sign is red. I wanted to bring a little bit more red into a different part of the painting to make it more coherent. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the blue. So I'll find a different spot in the painting to put blue. As the paint dries, it gets lighter. So you may want to go over it three or four times to darken it up because you will notice that it will get lighter when it dries. That's okay. You'll learn to work with that fact. Once you know that it's going to happen, you won't get upset after a while.
So while I have this brown color on my brush, I will find different areas in the paint in the painting to put the same brown on. So I'll move around from, from one area, maybe up top here, and down to the bottom. And so I'll keep the same color that's on my brush and find different spots in the painting to put it on so that the painting is unified. Um, I don't waste paint. I don't have to uh, worry about taking the paint off my brush all the time. I just use what's on there. And also use what's on your palette that you've mixed up already. And sometimes uh, after the paint is dried on your palette, you don't have to wipe your palette off every time you finished a, pa a painting, you just leave it on there and you can use it for the next time. It's still good. These colors are the same colors that the cave painters used and they are light fast colors, which means they have not faded in all these years. Uh, the siennas, the burnt sienna, raw sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, um, blacks, um, and the cave painters got the sienna colors and the ochre colors from, from the earth, from the actual pigments in the earth. And so they burnt the siennas to get burnt sienna, and raw sienna is unburnt brown paint. And to get blacks, they would burn bones and they would burn wood uh, to make the blacks and they are still good pigments today. So um, I'm not sure the names of what the cave painters, they didn't say raw sienna or raw umber, they had their own names. Who knows what those names were? Unintelligible today, but the pigments are still good today. They're light, fast pigments, so when you go to the art supply store, look on the tube of paint, uh, turn it around, wear your glasses because these uh, labels will be really tiny, but there should be a light fastness uh, brand on the back of the paint. So it will say light fastness one, two, or three. In Winsor Newton, the light fastness one means that it is the best uh, paint and that it won't uh, turn color in the sun. So I've worked on this brick wall on the left hand part of the painting and now I'm going to put a little bit of blue in this part of the painting because like, like with the red, um, I want to put little bits of red in the painting and little bits of blue in the painting to make the picture more coherent. So I'm using a very light blue, I'm just putting little, little bits of light blue in here um, and you know they don't have to be perfect and you know um, although it's really good to have a reference material um, in this case I have the actual photographs and I have my sample that I did before um, you don't have to depend on those um, you don't have to look at the reference material and try to copy it exactly the way it is. 
So after a while, you're going to stop looking at the reference material, figure out how you want the painting to be, because this is your painting, bring your own individuality to the picture, and um, you'll be much happier with it, and you'll have more fun, uh, rather than trying to copy something that you have in front of you. You're going to make it up as you go along, and I really have not looked at my, um, my uh, reference material or my, the painting, the practice painting. Um, I haven't looked at them very often. So, so I put little bits of blue in there, and while it's still wet, I can vary the, uh, vary the tone of the blue just by pressing some out very easy. So you see people think that you cannot change watercolor, you can. You can uh, make it lighter, make it darker, rub some out to, to give it more interest. So. so there. And now I'm ready to work on the uh, Friendly Fruit Mart painting itself. And I'm going to use uh, cadmium red. Um, now, when I when I worked on the sample piece, I realized that I should have painted the Friendly Fruit Mart sign a little bit differently, and that instead of just using one tone of red throughout the the lettering, I should have varied the tone. So now, when I do that. The second time, I'm going to watch out. I'm going to vary the tone. Some of the red will be darker. Some of the red will be lighter. Um, and some I will just leave white as if it has chipped off of the wall itself. That's the good thing about doing a practice painting. You can make as many mistakes as you want, fix them. Um, so when you do your larger painting that you can move along uh, with more confidence. So I've given myself some guidelines with a uh, red colored pencil and it picked up the texture of the rough watercolor paper. Um, in other words, the outline of the sign of the lettering won't be completely smooth. And that's a good thing because uh, it echoes the, um, the way that, the, that it is painted on the cement wall. So you, you, you want it to be rough. You want to show roughness. And that's why I'm using the rough watercolor paper to show a lot of texture. Um, depending upon the painting that I'm working on, I will change the uh, roughness of the watercolor paper. I'll change the type of watercolor paper that I use. Um, to do things uh, like farm scenes, um, I will use rough paper. Um, however, when I did the leather jacket series, I used a smooth uh, hot press paper. It's very smooth and um, I was able to, to get the effect of leather by uh, wiping out some of the paint. So here I'm adding more paint and I'm going to actually vary it by putting a little permanent rose in some of this. Okay, so so you can imagine that the sign was on the building for many years and part of it is probably uh, faded out and so I'm varying the, uh, the colors. Although I'm using a flat brush, I'm using the points of the brush to get in the small areas of the sign. So I'm going to move the flat brush uh, 
in a different way so that I can use the, the points, the edges of the brush. The cadmium red is really good because it covers a lot. It's an opaque pigment. Um, it's not as uh, transparent as most of the other colors. Like the earth colors are, are pretty transparent, and this is not. So it's doing a good job covering over the, um, the, uh, the siennas that I put down and the umbers that I put down. Um, so knowing what your paints are going to do will really help you um, to do the painting in the way that you want it to turn out. To add more texture to this painting, I'm going to use a fan brush. And on this fan brush, I have some ultramarine blue and some brown. And there's many different ways you can use a fan brush. It, um, you can use it to do little dots. You just go like that. And that you get that sort of dot texture. You can swipe it across the picture. Um, if you're going to use, um, if you're going to make uh, things like grass, um, any sort of lines, this is a wonderful brush to use, uh, a fan brush. Um, you can get them in all different sizes. And um, they're very, they're very versatile. They're really fun to use. The next technique I'm going to show you is how to spatter with a toothbrush to get a great textural effect. So you're going to mix up a large amount of paint, very watery. Put a lot of water on your palette and just put the toothbrush into the water. And you're going to take uh, some other uh, uh, wood or any, any other sort of piece and you're going to um, figure out what way you want your the spatters to be. You can move the toothbrush around to get different um, directions. And you want to you want to make sure that you are um, pulling this toward yourself because that way the spattering is going to go in that direction. If you do it like that way, then the paint will go on you and you do not want that. If you're wearing an apron, that's fine. But this is really a fun effect and you can change the colors I recommend that you change the tones in your spattering. Um, you can do from light to dark. And it's okay if it goes right over the sign today. Right, it's okay if it goes right over the lettering because this is a, an old sign. We want it to look old and rustic. So you can add more brown to it, to your spattering. Just change the colors whenever you want to. And uh, the more water you have on your toothbrush, the larger the spatters will be. But see, I'm just going over the entire painting to, to pick up uh, more texture. And if you don't like where the spattering went, you just take your 
paper towel and dab it out. You can make it lighter or darker by dabbing it. If you have an area that you want more spattering in, you just go over it with layers. It dries really quickly. Another thing you can do with your toothbrush is just to tap it. Just go like that, fill it with paint, tap it on your picture, wherever you want the texture to go. to do some little dabs of paint because um, the reference photo shows a lot. It looks like nail holes. I'm not exactly sure what they are, um, but I'm just going to uh, put some little circular types of things in here. Um, <clears throat> since there are a lot of lines in this painting. There are a lot of squares, rectangles. Um, I'm putting the, a circular shape in here to break it up. It adds more interest to the picture to put different shapes in here. Do a line of circular shapes over here. They don't have to be perfect. They can be different sizes, different colors. You don't have to stress out about doing something like this. It should be fun. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, scraping out with a razor blade. So once your paint is dried, um, you can scrape it off to get, to get down to the white of the paper. Um, so just make sure that everything has dried. I'm just going to scrape it right across the top. You're scraping the paint right off. Since this is an old sign, you want to make it look old. Since this is a 300 pound piece of arches paper, uh, you can get away with scraping with a razor blade. I would not recommend it with a, a lower uh, type of paper, um, like a 140 pound. Here we have it. I've shown you a lot of different techniques. And there's one other thing that you can also add. You can add watercolor uh, pencil to this. You can add um, uh, regular colored pencil to this picture and um, just experiment, have fun. Um, and so I hope you have learned a lot about uh, different techniques that you can do in watercolor. And so feel free to join me on my website, www.janebergoli.com, and have a lot of fun painting with this technique.
I really enjoy it and I think you will too.